Hi, I'm Kristen Sakota, Director of the Los Angeles County Department of Arts and Culture. On August 6, 2019, Los Angeles County Supervisors Sheila Kuehl and Hilda Solis introduced a motion that directed the County Women and Girls Initiative to collaborate with the Department of Arts and Culture to create artworks celebrating the centennial ratification of the 19th Amendment, which granted women the right to vote. Now, although this was a historic achievement that took several generations to accomplish, the passage of the 19th Amendment did not mean that all women were able to vote. As we know, many women of color were prevented from voting for decades through racial discrimination or intimidation. So the work to achieve equity and fairness in our election process is ongoing. But to mark this centennial, we invited LA's creative community to explore and celebrate the achievements of the suffragists and place the movement in a larger historical context. The resulting artworks that our department commissioned reflect a diversity of women and perspectives and highlight themes such as women's empowerment, civic engagement, resiliency, and the right to vote. The six commissioned artworks will be accessioned into the LA County Civic Art Collection. They'll also be framed and installed in the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors and Department of Arts and Culture offices. And in an exciting collaboration with LA County Library, there will be limited edition library cards, bookmarks, and more. So some of the ways we're making the artwork accessible during this time of COVID is shareable social media graphics that encourage voting and downloadable posters you can find on our website. And now, with all that said, I'm going to turn it over to the Los Angeles County Department of Arts and Culture's Civic Art Director, Grace Ramirez Gaston, and she's going to moderate a conversation hosted by LA County Library with our amazing artists that we commissioned for this project. If you'd like to learn more about the Department of Arts and Culture, you can go to our website as lacountyarts.org. And I want to thank LA County Library's Director Sky Patrick and all the library staff for making this event happen. Thank you so much and enjoy. Thank you very much, Kristen. I am pleased to be here and speak with these terrific artists about their work and their contribution to the centennial anniversary of the 19th Amendment celebration. It is my pleasure to introduce five of the six artists with you today. Rodney Agarwal. Hello, Rodney. She is a graphic designer and illustrator whose work is driven by bold and vibrant colors and pop art aesthetic. Moses Ball. Hello, Moses. He is a muralist and community activist whose work deeply engages and addresses historic and current events. Andrea Monroe. She is a painter whose rich, layered, and colorful artworks currently focus on Los Angeles historical figures. Laura Vasquez Rodriguez. She is also a painter who uses symbolic imagery as the cornerstone of her work to communicate narratives that inspire the human spirit. Amy Smith. She is a mixed media artist whose work celebrates women and questions societal norms. I would just like to say that the sixth artist uh, wasn't uh, unfortunately couldn't uh, be here today, and his name is Clarence Williams III, and he is a photographer whose work leans towards social justice. So, all of you, thank you so much for being here. Uh, let's get started with the first questions. Uh, the, uh, it's for Amy and Moses, and I'll have Amy answer first. So, Amy, what attracted you to participate in the county's 100th anniversary celebration of the passage of the 19th Amendment? Well, I've been focusing on women's rights and, and focusing on women in my artwork in the past, uh, like, five, five years since I've been doing portraits. Mm -hmm. And when that came up, I really wanted to create, like, a visual narrative of the past, the present and what I think the future of fem feminism will be. So I really wanted to focus on um, inclusion and unity. So I had a lot of the um, posters from the past um, when it first when it first got um, passed. In, um, and then I kind of created new poster images to kind of reflect 
what I think like the future of like feminism and inclusivity will look like. So I th I think it was it was just something that I really wanted to do to try and push the movement forward and to share what I think the future of feminism will be. Thank you. How about you, Moses? Uh, for me, you know, I, I didn't expect to get the all back um, because, and I'll speak on behalf of my fellow artists who couldn't be here, uh, just being the one of only two men who, who were chosen, uh, you know, I'll just try not to completely embarrass the male population in the midst of all these amazing, amazing artists um, and intelligent women who are on the panel. Uh, I, I specifically thought of black women and their contribution um, to the women's rights movement and the way in which that they were fighting on two fronts. So they're fighting the women's rights movement at simultaneously while fighting anti lynching and anti racism and fighting for civil rights. And in many cases, they would be, be marginalized on both sides. And so um, in a lot of cases, they had to start their own uh women's rights clubs and and whatnot and and so i just wanted to speak to that specifically because i felt that they should be recognized for the important that they did on important work that they did on both sides and and i don't think that um these women get that credit all the time thank you so of course all of you have accomplished this artistic careers ranging from costume design graphic design painting and illustration so Andrea, Rodney, and Laura, how does this project intersect with your art practice? And I'll start with Andrea first. Well, hello there. Um, uh, well, I've been in the costume uh, film business for 30 years, something like that. And my love of fashion um, developed in my teenage years, and I sold clothing and whatnot. So I, I just... I guess I got inspired by the history involved in this project as well, because I started, you know, dabbling in his LA historical figures, and I would do them in black and white and their in all their uh, glory, <laughs> you know, with their costume, and uh, against this very colorful, vibrant backgrounds, and the it it just became kind of like something that I really enjoyed and uh, it was a little surreal and playful and exciting. And uh, when I saw this opportunity come about, I, I thought I'd hit the road and, and see if, <laughs> if they liked it. And I actually couldn't believe I was chosen. So um, I'm very grateful and I have a very energetic piece and it's very celebratory of women and uh, the movement. And I actually wasn't very involved in politics or anything for a long time until the Bush years. So, and now I'm like crazy. And, uh, <laughs> and the, when the, um, the, mar the women's marches started and stuff, I just saw how deeply embedded women were in history and having change done. And I, I think we're gonna rule the world, so. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, on that note, I will let Laura uh, respond next. I felt as though this project was a really good fit for me. I think that it really aligned well with my style. And um, I think, first of all, because I'm a woman and also because women, uh, that's the topic of the majority of my paintings, that's what I focus on. And I think that women are just so beautiful and so strong and um, that by nature, you know, we're really very loving and nurturing people. Um, so we're also very courageous and passionate people and we're able to overcome so many adversities. So as I was working on this project, I really, uh, it was really wonderful to see how much symbolism was used during the suffrage movement uh, because symbolism really plays such a huge role in my own artwork. So. Uh, Creating this piece really felt very natural for me, and I enjoyed it. Great, thank you, Rodney. You can. Um, so, most of my art career has been about celebrating women, and just wanting to like have a sense of belonging. And I think this project aligned perfectly with a lot of my art because you can't without 
the ability to vote, you can't belong. You can't decide anything for yourself. You can't, you have to have that in order for everything else to follow along and to share your voice. So, yeah. Thank you. Next question is for Moses, Laura, and Amy. So, of course, all of you know that there are many strong women that participated in the suffrage movement. Were there particular leaders in the movement or women in your own life that you thought of while making your design choices? Moses, you had touched upon that in the beginning, so I'll let you take this one first. Uh, well, for me, like most of my childhood up, childhood up till 13, age 13, I was raised by my grandmother. And so um, I had lost both parents, but my grandmother moved at the time we lived in Portland, moved to um, Portland and took care of all of the four of my siblings and I. And so she's always been um, kind of like my iconic uh, feminist hero, if, if you want to say. Uh, but as far as the project and the painting specifically, um, I was looking at, um, you know, there are so many contributors, but I, I narrowed it down to five, which was Mary B. Talbert. Um, Mary Churchill, Church Terrell, who was actually featured on, I don't know if anyone watches Lovecraft uh, Country. She was, um, they slipped like her image on like the family photo wall, um, which was really, really interesting com considering like who she is in the movement. Um, Ida B. Wells, who was um, a, you know, owned two newspapers, a respected reporter, anti-lynching activist, um, you know, Nanny Helen Burroughs and, and Francis E.W. Harper, who was a famous, um, you know, poet and writer. And um, it's interesting that they, um, like in her bio, they talk about how well known she was. And, and they would say, um, as far as like how known she is, she was second to Fred Frederick Douglass, which I think was, um, you know, it's it's praise, but at the same time, it's ironic because if she was a man, I wonder if, you know, she would have been elevated uh, to that number one spot, if you want to say. Um, but just such, a, you know, amazing, strong women who, like I said, were m marginalized in the movement and didn't get embittered and, and say, OK, well, we're not going to deal with the women's rights movement, but started their own women's rights uh, groups. You know what I mean? And so I think that just being strong enough to face um, racism within your own movement and being able to not only overcome that, but help the entire movement at the same time is just an amazing, inspiring thing to do. And, it, and it's, um, I think it's, it, it's inspiring even to today and, and the various moments we have. And they persisted, correct? Uh, Laura, can you answer that question as well? You're on mute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that um, for me, as far as any one person, I can't pinpoint one person again because there's so many uh, strong women in my own family. And so, you know, I was just thinking of all of them in all honesty, you know, um, my mother, my grandmothers, you know, my, my aunts and my sisters, they've all had uh, such a huge role in my life and they've all been very inspirational to me. Um, you know, they're all very selfless and passionate women, and they're very devoted to their families and, you know, to their churches, to their communities. And I think that um, just even my love for nature, that comes from them. And so even within this own painting, with this painting, I incorporated the birds and the butterflies. And so I think uh, throughout all of my paintings, through all of my artwork, there's always going to be uh, elements, a little, little, Parts and pieces in each of my paintings that that reminds me of them. Thank you, Amy. This was like this was a harder question, I think, for me. Um, I I had um, some positive like female role models in my life, like my aunt, um, my grandma, but I actually ha I had like a lot of like contention with um my my own mother so i feel like i would always i have two older brothers so i feel like i was always kind of i didn't really get into the whole feminist thing 
for a while because I just didn't feel very feminine. I didn't feel like I had femininity around me. So I really did take this um, opportunity to learn a lot more about um, the women's rights movement. And I tried to learn um, as much as I could. And, and um, I think for me, like the inspiration I think came from learning about kind of like what Moses was saying, like there was, there was the women, there was like the white um, movement and then there was everyone else kind of fighting, you know, like there was kind of like this segregated like um, movement that was happening. And I thought um, Sojourner Truth's speech, I thought was really amazing, um, Ain't I a Woman? Because it's really, um, that was really inspiring to read and um, to learn about, I thought. Thank you. The next question is for Rogni and Andrea. I would love it if each of you could please provide insight to your artwork. So what inspires you? I'll start, start with Rogni, please. Hi. Um, so a lot of my artwork is about centers around mental health and a lot of my own issues with mental health and it comes from a lot of the darkest periods in my life. I have um, both depression and anxiety. So art kind of came out of a period in my life where I just felt extremely alone. And um, I, ha I knew that there had to be other people who felt similarly to me. So um, just putting just, and I'm quite shy, so like putting my art out there is like a way for me to verbalize how I feel without actually having to use my words. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of my art came out of that and also wanting to feel seen in modern society where, you know, I'm Indian, um, I grew up in the United States, but I don't feel represented. So. It was just about celebrating beauty and different body types and just different um, mindscapes. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Andrea, what inspires you? Um, well, I'm more or less self-taught and originally I was drawn in to a spiritual um, community. And that's when I first started expressing my work onto canvas. And the everything actually started in a religious aspect. It was like colorful. I used to call it Byzantine pop art because it was like it was like this these, you know, Jesus and Mary and all this aura around them. And I just started to develop mostly patterns and stuff. And um, I guess originally I decided that my ideas and my inspiration came from the universe, basically. You know, it just like, if I had any questions about what I was going to paint next or anything, I just would just almost do that still voice, you know, like wake up in the morning and have an idea and then I'd go for it. So it's pretty much, it's pretty simple for me and I love doing it this way. Sometimes I think my work isn't understood because it's totally out of the box uh, compared to, you know, the the forms that you see going on in the art world. You know, I anyway, but I just go for it. I, I figure I'll be a great dead artist. So <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but even then, why not? <laughs> right. So this leaves us um, with one last question. So let's talk about voting, right? Uh, why is voting important to each of you? And I'll start with Andrea first. Oh, okay. Um, well, I have to say doing this project brought, brought a lot of um, drive into my wanting to help, especially in this election. I mean, I think just these last four years without mentioning names <laughs> has been, 
just a lesson in life and politics and nation and and whatnot. And it's so important that we are out there to to help get people voted that can make decisions for us, you know, good decisions for us and all of us, not just the few. And uh, so I'm even now I'm like volunteer to write postcards and letters and get other elect you know, elections going in other states. So I encourage everybody to do it. I truly believe this is so important and I wish I had known it when I was younger. <laughs> Laura. Um, I think that uh, voting is very important uh, because it does make a difference. And, uh, and I think that there's some elections where, you know, the margins are just so, so small that every single vote actually does matter. You know, you do make a difference. Um, and also, I think that if we want the government to reflect the people, then it's really important that the people get out to vote. And of course, you know, after doing this project, I mean, I just feel uh, so much more grateful to these women who, who endured so much, who sacrificed so much. And so it's just really a wonderful way to honor them. Thank you. Rogni. Um, I think it's pretty clear that there's a lot of change we want to see in the world. And with, with voting, we can't see any of that change, whether no matter what you believe in or what side you feel like you land on, if you don't vote, you can't, there won't, you won't have space to create any of the change that we want to see in the world. Thank you. Amy. I, I think voting is just your voice being used to share what's important to you. So I think the more that we share each other's voices, we know we can create the world that we want to live in and we have, but we have to use our voice. We have to share what it is that's important to us and how we want our communities to be built and how we want our government to run. So I think I think it's extremely important because if we're not sharing our voices, like who is, you know? Who's making those decisions? So. For me, you know, I've, I've always been a, a person who kind of studies beyond what the history books teach you in and so, um, you know, whether talking about, like, for instance, we, we just did our work about women's rights. And um, for me, you know, going into civil rights and um, just all the, the racial disparities and over the years and, and voting has always been important in helping to those type of things to inch along. Right. And so um, I've always done it since I was 18. But a few years ago uh, when I used to be a resident of Chicago, I voted for a young uh, in local instructor uh, to, for, to the Senate and his name was Barack Obama. And um, it was funny because right after I voted for him, he pulled up right in front of me. I lived in the same neighborhood as him and I was like, I voted for you. And, you know, he thanked me and he he, he always had that ability to make you feel like like he really cares what you have to say. Um, and, and so seeing that moment of a local election um, birth this huge movement in a national election, you know, as far as him getting to the presidency and winning and being the first black man ever elected, um, lets you know how powerful voting can be. But the fact that he was like the first lets you know how much our votes are needed. And so, you know, we have another chance with this election. Um, we're the first woman on woman on a ballot. Um, and so uh, it's interesting being down here in, you know, rural Missouri, where every single sign um, says Trump Pence. And it's, it's so opposite from LA, which is, you know, Biden or, you know, everybody really, I mean, you, you, you have Bernie and, you know, you still have Hillary and, and everybody um, representing those people. Uh, but it's so um, locked in down here for this one candidate. 
it's, it's almost and then another thing that's interesting is you have a lot of um like confederate flags and then you also have confederate monuments and it's like the celebration kind of of the opposite side and so it's 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 really opened my eyes to um how important uh the vote is and 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 how we really need to move on it because in, i think in la we get kind of complacent sometimes like we know that the candidate who's probably a democrat or or more liberal is probably gonna you know california is probably gonna automatically vote for that person but if you go across america there's so much so many opposite feelings and so regardless of which side you fall on it's important to represent um the candidate that's going to further your your views and your position in life absolutely thank you thank you so i mean we definitely know we can agree that voting is one of the most impactful things that you can do not only for yourself but for, for your community as you've all voiced here so for everyone watching please go out and vote on november 3rd and make that difference this concludes this q a i just want to thank everyone so much for sharing your perspectives your insights and for taking the time to participate in this conversation again thank you be well and be safe